So hello and welcome back to the very messy uh, workbench. So my uh, timber loads have finally dried. I maybe went a bit nuts with the PVA, but uh, they're definitely quite uh, quite solid little blocks now. Maybe slightly over scale, but you know, take what you can find in the garden. So the next job I was going to do was make some little ratchet straps and that's what all of these little strips are. So the first idea I had was print them, fold them and then obviously glue them over. I have no idea why I thought it would be useful to have a double thickness and have them printed on the underside but regardless of that I then cut one and it's a little bit huge, so if I offer it up to the the ruler, it's what two mil. So I think really it would have been better slightly thinner again. Now I probably could try with the ruler and the knife and slice this. But I thought I'll show you how I made these with the Cricut. Uh, I've obviously, I've gone for blue ratchet straps and high-vis orange ratchet straps, because why not? So I'll jump onto the laptop and we'll see how we got to this stage at least. Oh, okay. So uh, here we are in the, the Cricut uh, design space and these were the two little ratchet straps that I made. So if we open up the blue one you can see it contains two parts. So a print and cut which is just what it is is the blue strap with the little silver bit on it and then the line which was scored down the middle just to help me fold it. So what I can do with that is if I detach that, I'll just delete the um, score line because I'm not going to use that. And then if I select the print and cut, now if I unflatten this, it'll go back to being two squares. If I click on the, the silver square, so it's 0 0.5 wide by 0 0.4 tall so the idea was folded in half it would be 2.5 mil wide and then obviously the blue one is 0 0.5 by 8 centimeters so the other thing I've done is these colors if you go up to the little blue um, color section so click on the advanced and I'm using this hex code. So basically all I had done is type into Google sort of hive is blue color. It gives that uh, that hex code and that gives you a, a reasonably nice color. And then the silver one has a particularly funky code and that is the fancy computer code for the colour silver and it just saves trying to pick something that looks right. So what I want to do is make these a good bit narrower. So I'll go back, select the square first, go up to the size. First of all I need to unlock the proportions. It has a habit of locking that and then if you change the width it'll proport you know if I make the width half it will change the height. I have. This isn't the easiest software to use. So what I probably want is 1.5 millimeters, so 0 0.15 as it's set in centimeters. It's probably going to be as fine as I can accurately cut and you know the as with all of modeling it's a bit of a, a tolerance but 
Oh, why did that not do it? 0 0.15. That's it. And as we can see, it's changed the uh, the banner to being much smaller. All we'll do is go to the silver one. We will unlock the proportions. We'll make that one. And I'll actually make this three just to make it a little bit more shorter. Now, obviously, when we're using such small parts, it is kind of hard to, to see. So what I can do is just select both of them and we will align them center and that just makes sure they're on. Now at the moment it would try and print the blue and then it will try and print the silver. So what I want to do is click the flatten button and that makes it into one object and as it says print and cut so what it will do is print out the little blue and silver strip and then feed it into the machine and it will um, cut it and hopefully be able to cut it at 1.5 so well, if we go to the orange one again we'll get rid of the score line here what I can probably do is just unlock that and go 1.5 hit enter. So that's made two of those that are now exactly the same. So a couple of ways I can now choose to deal with this. I can just tell it to make and then tell it I want 20 copies or what I can do is copy and then just paste out a pile of them, select them all, the whole moving and distributing stuff in this software is really quite rubbish. Um, we'll just pull these up and get them organized and then we'll go for printing. Okay so I've tidied them up and then it's arranged them now onto the mat. It's got a, a border around it because that's where I'll print the reference marks for the printing cut and what I can do up here if I want is change the number of copies. So it warns me that it's going to mess it around and it just adds more. So it just says here's three. What I want to do is continue and it's going to ask me to print it. So here it suggests there's the reference marks. Ah, we'll, we'll leave that. Got a printer. It's going to add bleed, so what it'll actually do is print slightly wider than the uh, the exact strip, so that you can cut a bit off, and it just uh, fixes any alignment issues for very fine stuff. So we will hit print, and then we'll switch back to a real camera and see how that's doing. Okay, so it says check your print looks like this, and it does. So. I've just printed it on normal copy paper, so we're all, all off to go. The uh, machine is conveniently hiding down here. So there, that's a whole pile of little tiny ratchet straps stuck onto the mat. Little fine uh, point blade in there. And you can sort of see what the bleed looks like. It sort of makes it a little messy and it should cut those off. The one thing I find with this is it does kind of matter to get it as square as you can. If it's slightly twisted, the referencing marks obviously uh, are less effective and it just, you know, it's the one case where it actually matters. So we've got a little flashing light to load it in. 
So you'll just check that it's got what it's expecting in it. And then ready to go. Hit the go button. It does exactly the same thing again. And then this is where it's looking at those four black reference marks. And it'll work out from that where the image is and where it needs to cut, which is really quite clever. Okay, so there it's finished its referencing. And as you can kind of see, it's just going up and down cutting each uh, strip. So we'll see what that looks like then. Okay, so there's the end result. And if I very carefully try and hook one of those. So you can see just how fine. In truth, I could probably print it at one mil. And then, oh, of course, it's going to bend the wrong way. By the time I get that sort of pulled tight and glued down, I think that'll work uh, reasonably. The big silver buckles are probably a bit too big, but it certainly gives me the vague effect and I've got a couple to mess around with. So anyway, that's um, hopefully something that is useful and interesting to, uh, to people. It shows one of the sort of useful features of the little Cricut uh, cutters and the only other thing I might try and show is just a, there's a calibration system for getting the cuts set up and it is worth doing. Um, so I'll maybe show you how to do that in the next video. Anyway, thanks to the couple of new subscribers. Hope you find this interesting and uh, see you next time.